Where? Police station. Oh, yeah. You know, jail. <laughs> well, the police station in Waveland, I don't know if you heard the story there, but all those guys were hanging on the trees and yeah. everything else because they're only in like a one or two story building. And, uh, See, I'm not, I'm not really as much in the surge as I am in the wind. Well, yeah. I gotta see the wind. In your video, was that as bad as the surge was? Was there a point where it was worse? There was a point when it was even higher, but I wasn't recording. Um, for one reason, I was taking a break. My camera was having lots of problems. And I didn't realize that that was going to be the peak. I figured it was. I maybe had a little bit more to go. So I took a break during the highest part. Um, I went on the third floor, I believe, and looked out the back window. And the surge was like halfway into the second floor. And that hotel sits on a 12, 10 or 12 foot hill. So that's kind of where we, we were kind of thinking 26 to 28 feet. There. I didn't notice a lot of wave action on the surge, though. It seemed like it was just like a rolling. Well, be, yeah, there wasn't a lot of like big waves, but a lot of my filming was behind the hotel. So what happened is the the water was just already going through the hotel, so a lot of the wave action was broken down. But on the front side, um, which I didn't film much out the window because the wind was just you couldn't like film. There was nowhere to film without glass in the way, and I hate that. I was like trapped. Right. So that sort of drove me crazy um, during the height. But um, but then once it receded, it was like somebody pulled the plug. It was really? it, it completely receded in like an hour's time. Really? Yeah, it was just out. Wow. And we, when we got that first look out of the stairwell, when the surge was still you know, a couple of feet coming across, I don't know if you know the shot when the waves were crashing inside the stairwell. Yeah. That was just amazing. Car with the lights on. That's Yeah, but that was when I really realized, like, oh shit! This was... At the time, everything happened so fast, and you're not really—you're just thinking about your survival, getting some shots. But after it was all over, I thought, damn, this this is going to be bad. And when we first got that look and walked outside, and the hotel that was just there six hours ago is nothing but a concrete slab. Even giant oak trees that have been there that probably lived in the meal that are, you can't put your arms around. All that was left was a pit, like it was in the ground, and the tree's nowhere to be seen. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah. You know, I was talking to Jack about the intensity of that compared to Camille. Yeah. And it was still consistent, consistent. Camille was a Cat Five when he went through there. Uh huh. But how would you, how were the winds? I mean, at the height of that, you think, I mean, were they like anything that you could compare it to? Or? Well, see, the only wind I saw it was the tunnel effect because it was blowing between the right. And the only real good view of the wind was at that point. Uh, at the bottom of the stairwell, there's a shot, and you see the wind blowing through the, like, where the rooms used to be. You see, like, shower heads. So I think it was probably a little bit amplified through there. Right. Um, I don't know. I guess Category 3 or so, um, I would say. But I did, the, the building was definitely shaking. You can hear the, you know, you can hear the wind howling, but you, I guess you can't really go by that. Was there any the roof cage. damage on that building? But I don't think so. You know, I don't think. I'm, I'm gonna tell you what. That hotel was built really good, really, really good. I mean, those windows were like hurricane windows, I'm sure. And yeah. I don't think there was one broken window. I mean, of course, the first floor. Is that why you picked that building, or yeah. was it just a? Oh yeah. Oh no, we weren't gonna stay there. Our original plan was to go to a parking garage, which partially collapsed. So it's a good thing we didn't go there. So is that your scariest chase experience, you think? No. For me, it was Hurricane Ivan. Really? Yeah. What happened in that? Uh, I was in a hotel in Pensacola Beach, and, and of course, you know, it was at night, and it was this eerie. It was more. It was wasn't that I was scared for my life as much as I'm by myself. It's nighttime on a barrier island that's surrounded by water, and the wind's howling. You can hear the wooden houses breaking apart. You can't see them, and. Um, it was just creepy. All I had was my little flashlight, you know, and I'm, I'm walking around the hotel. And to me, that was probably the scariest. I'm like, God, I wish somebody was here with me just to experience this with somebody, you know. Right. But uh, to be honest, Katrina, I never was scared. Um, well, maybe because it was in the light. And it happened so fast. Yeah, and I was with other people. Yeah. There was a couple guys there that were in the Navy that were stationed there. And I'm going to pull this big guys are like, well, if we get into a problem, it's good to have strong guys around because if we have to, I don't know, parts of the roof collapse or something, we can maybe get
get out of it. But but yeah, I remember I was talking to you. And we got yeah, cut and, off. Or and, and yeah, that yeah, that was that stupid phone couple. Right? I was trying to learn how to use that thing. It's a brand new. And phone there was someone before. talking in the background. That wasn't that the problem. Or something happened to where you were talking and you can hear somebody else talking. And something got a little screwed up there. Or something I don't remember. And <laughs> it was a disaster. It was <clears throat> but when I was talking to you, I was literally sitting. That was that was. I don't think it was the height of it. But it was almost the height. And I'm sitting in the stairwell, out of breath, because we kept running up and down the stairs. I'm wearing a life preserver. And I remember saying to myself, I need to take a 15-minute break. And that's when we talked. I thought, this is going to be my only time to... Yeah, I'm, I'm glad we were able to yeah. talk during the height of that. that was you um, put all your stuff up on YouTube now? or I'm starting to. Yeah, I've got quite a bit of stuff on there. Um, I have an Ultimate Chase channel. I've been surprised. trying. I'm surprised you've really been, I mean, uh, outstanding. I mean, I don't know why they, they haven't for... put you on more. I, I see your videos on, on TV. I've done a lot of, like, shows, but not like a, I want to do like a, you know George Cronus? He has uh, Angry Planet from Canada. Uh, well, he's got his own show show, I mean, and it's like, oh, I would love to do something like that. Because you have funding behind you, and I have so many ideas of places I want to go, but I just can't afford to jump on a plane and... <laughs> no other words, so, you know, you got to know somebody and yeah. get your way in, you know, and I'm surprised nobody's found your work because... Yeah, um, I'm hoping it's going to happen. It happened, you know. I, hey, Jim. Hey, Mike. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, 5D. 5D2. Yeah, baby. It just upgraded the software to the 24. So Jim, Jim Williams. I'm Jim. City? Jim Williams. Yeah, okay, I heard of you. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's heard of you. <laughs> I saw his shirt. I said, "Where is Jim Williams?" No, it's good. I want the big website. Yep. Yep. With all the interviews and you put live video up when it's happening and try to get people as much information. You know. Do we get some action? Yeah, last year was horrible. I know. The last year was going out of business because last year. Yeah, they don't realize that uh, we need yeah, storms. Yeah. yeah. Jim, this is this is Andrea. Andrea. Yeah. Yeah. I know we've talked. What's up? <laughs> How, how's things going with your deal you had? Where do you guys live? Do you guys go around? Uh, here 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 on oh, at least he's in South America. Well, I have, I have a, a condo in Homestead. It's kind of where I live normally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got my condo. And uh, I couldn't sell it if I wanted to anyway. And uh, but I've been living in Paraguay, South America. You know, there's a tan. Right now it's 90s, but it was breaking 100 for a few days there. Paraguay, I'm trying to think of not connected in, in between Brazil and Argentina. Okay. It's landlocked, right in the center. It's not a, it's not a huge country. It's probably a little bit bigger than Texas, I would say. <laughs> now, oh, the mystery good. camera's coming. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, oh. I like the look of that truck. How do you like the meat? Yeah, it's a good meat. Time for a tsunami. <laughs> hey, maybe that's what's happening here. Today, <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 you totally lay like right here. Yeah. Are you? 
No. Uh, that worked. That worked. <laughs> take a test. Yeah. yeah. So take take two. Make sure it comes out. <laughs> yes, right, Dave. Can get in right over here. It's the camera button to the left. Okay. What up, Steve? What? What to the right? I mean, to the right. <laughs> Get the group shot over there. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Funny because the science fiction fantasy writers of America have scheduled.